saying happy Tuesday. Welcome to today's episode of Refresh, our daily live morning show that only brings you the most uplifting, the most positive, the most inspirational videos from around the web. My name is Cassie. I'm a producer here at Little Things. And right there behind the camera is my amazing husband, Paul. Say hello, Paul. Cha-cha! Whoa! <laughs> Paul's going to be joining us later along with Mike and some special guests. We're going to have a lot of fun, so please stick around. But first, we have to get to our top five countdown of the day. Starting with video number five, we have a mama horse who surprises her humans with a very unusual birth. Let's take a look. This is Guy waiting to help the baby stand. But that's not it. We're not done. This is a special surprise birth. Look at ah! So this is Don Quixote. It's a good horse. Man. Starting to want to stand a great horse. Man. Don Quixote. Ah! Come on, little baby. Come on, you're so wobbly. You'd be too. So we start helping all our babies stand as soon as they start trying. The humans give a little nudge. So William, our night watch, helps the little boy balance. And then look, he's cleaning them up. We're gonna Kelly Fern is saying, Happy, happy Tuesday. Good morning, my lovely sugar cubes. Happy Tuesday, lovely Roots sugar cubes. Roots in here. Debbie yeah. from Liverpool in the UK. Cool. Where are y'all watching from? Uh oh, look at this. Daisy uh -oh. giving a second baby is coming. This what? is not normal afterbirth. So she is in labor again. The camera dropped. <laughs> But look at this. So. This is the second Surprise baby. Surprise baby. He came out legs first. It's a breach, right? That's dangerous for a horse. I know. Oh, look at this guy. Sylvie saying good morning, cast and crew, and Sugar Q from morning. Northern British Columbia, Canada. Oh, Sylvie's in Canada. Oh, did we know that? I feel like we knew that. Huh. Oh, look at this. Two fresh little horse babies. Fresh <laughs> horse babies. Fresh out of the mom. So this is little duet. Doing well, just in need of a bit of balancing support. Look how floppy their feet are. Their little hooves aren't quite hooves yet. Charlotte Fagetta saying, you can do it, thumbs up. You can do it, they're doing it. They're doing they it. They need a little help, but don't we all sometimes? Rufus saying, welcome I'm back home, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Tiffany and adding a friend saying, Stacey James is important for you to be addicted to. John Jenny Law, good morning from Niagara Falls. Ooh, hey, you're pretty close to us. Oh, yeah. So we have two little but healthy foals, a miracle. The statistics of having live, healthy twins is minuscule. Wait, is Niagara Falls not near us? Eight miles, eight hours. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I should brush up on my geography. I always thought it was right beside New York. Oh, look at them, little babies. Welcome to the world. Welcome to the world. Daisy is a very proud mom of her two foals. Look at that. See, I don't know, guys. The news wants to tell us that the world is scary and bad and crazy. There are horses being born. How can the world be bad if there are baby horses being born right now? That's what I have to say. All right, speaking of babies being born, video number four, we have a family of giraffes who have a stunning reaction to the birth of a new little baby. Let's take a look. Another giraffe. Another giraffe. Look at this. So this is Ursula. She is giving birth to her first calf. Look at this. Ah, oh, so we have a whole family of giraffes here. This baby's just hanging on out. He is ready to go. He's saying, world, watch out. I'm here. Keep your eyes on the family, too. Yeah, that to that's what's really, yeah. Are you okay, Susie? What's going on here? <laughs> Her name's Ursula. <laughs> you can't just rename a giraffe. Ah, there we go. Okay, so everybody scatters really quick. But then... This is kind of scared. It, yeah, of course. Now, some people might be concerned about the baby hitting the concrete, but where uh, giraffes are originally from, which is the plains in Africa, that's pretty hard ground, too. And they need that hard hit to clear their throats because they have such long necks and they have uh, fluid. It's so like that, when people spank uh, it's when babies. when you spank a baby, yeah. So that's exactly the same thing. Look at them all gathering around, checking out this baby, welcoming, welcoming this baby into the family. I think Good luck, we, little baby. We tend to think that only humans kind of feel connections with their with their offspring, but that's not true. You got aunts and uncles and cousins here and brothers and sisters. <laughs> ah, look, he's so goopy. He's very goopy. Oh. oh, what a sweet face. Little sweetie. That's that's the name. What an amazing video, but let's 
let's keep going, guys. Video number three, we have a terrified dog who had given up all hope until a group of angels arrived. Let's take a look. So this little baby, this is one of our favorite groups. This is Animal Aid Unlimited. They typically just do work in, uh, in India, where they're based. Um, so this little dog clinging to the side, she couldn't rest for even a moment. So they didn't know how long she'd been there. And, you know, when you're keeping yourself afloat, you lose energy. So she's barely hanging on. And these guys, look at this. Look at the, what would you call that? The um, harness. The harnesses oh, yeah. they've rigged. I mean, they don't know what's in there. Who knows what is in that water? That is stagnant water. It's dangerous. It's These really, guys go all out. Yeah, and you don't know. I mean, there's snakes in there. Who knows? But I didn't all think they, of that. yeah, who, all, all they know is there is a dog in need, and they're gonna do anything they can to rescue her. I mean, that dog was clean for life too. Yeah, because isn't it? Don't they say that typically you you drown from exhaustion? Isn't yeah, that right? Yeah. You don't drown from inhaling water. It's from getting tired, and that that dog was right on the edge. Thank goodness. I mean, look at this guy. He's holding the dog in one hand. He's lifting himself with the other. That is a hero. And I think that's the point. That's why we do this show, is to show you that all around the world, people from all backgrounds, all nations, we're here for one common purpose, and that is to take care of each other. And that includes our furry friends. They are part of this planet, too. And it's just so beautiful. So we brought her back to Animal Aid to warm her up, let her rest, make sure she was completely healthy. Aaron McFarland saying, these ones always get me. Oh. They're Ooh, so Cynthia's good. saying baby Caitlin is loving the show today. Yay, baby Caitlin, hi! Oh, look at her. Look at her. What a difference. And baby Caitlin, I saw your Halloween costume. Ooh. Too stinking cute. You look so cute. Is it too spooky? No, no. It's not spooky mm. at all. It's beautiful. Oh, look at her! Oh, gosh, I love dogs. They're just, you know, we don't deserve them. We we're, don't. You were not good. They're angels. They're, an they're, they're literally angels, they on are earth. angels on earth. Yeah, it's, oh, it's not fair. They're just so <laughs> loving. I just love them so much. <laughs> All right, video number two. We have a little baby who has the funniest reaction to dad's hilarious philosophy lesson. <laughs> Let's take a look. To clump over and become you. Somehow, like literally, like a piece of software melded together, fused, and then like it started to turn itself into like a living, breathing, you know, like a steak with a brain. Like your meat that grew up inside your mother. You're like a wetware android. And now you're like grasping all this amazing information as you map and model the world. You're growing, you're learning, you're experiencing. Expanding, you're slowly emerging as a thinking being, and it's like, oh my God, this is this what is it's like to be a mind. This is I mean, too you're, smart. you're transcendent. You're transcendent. <laughs> you're transcendent, but you're also like made of flesh. So it's like holding you is like, what is this like actual piece of divine miracle that somehow this universe allowed to, to organize? It's insane. Like looking into your eyes actually feels like looking at a galaxy. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I mean, it, a lot of it's too smart for me, but what I do understand, it's beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful. A divine, what did you say? A divine miracle? Yes. That's what we are. It's looking crazy. into your eyes is like looking into a galaxy. It's <laughs> true. I mean, everything about life is miraculous and mind-boggling. It's so puzzling. How are we here? How do I have the, the faculties of speech right now? I'm speaking to a camera, and somehow I'm speaking to people around the world. Life is so beautiful and bizarre. It's wonderful. It is. We're along for the ride. All right, guys, video number one. We have a dad-to-be who gives the love of his life a shocking surprise at their gender reveal party. Let's take a look. Thank you. 
right, guys, please join me in welcoming to Refresh Gitanjali Rao, America's top young scientist of 2017. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I think you're our youngest guest that we've had on so far. <laughs> I'm very excited. I am too. So you're 11 years old. Yes. You are in seventh grade, <laughs> is that right? And yes. uh, you have just been named America's top young scientist. So congratulations. Thank you. That's so awesome. Um, what exactly is the Young Scientist Challenge? Um, the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge um, allows kids the opportunity around my age um, or middle school years to have the opportunity to be selected as one of the top 10 finalists and to um, um, talk to a 3M scientist mentor over the course of three months and compete for a $25,000 grand prize and the title of America's Top Young Scientist. That is awesome. And you won. <laughs> yes, That's I so did. And this just ha you were just announced the winner, is that right? Um, I was announced the winner last Tuesday. Wow. Yes. This is fresh. That's yes. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so what you you got twenty five thousand for winning, mm -hmm. and now you get to go around and spread your amazing innovation. <laughs> this is so great. Um, Thank you. So you won for this invention. It's called a Tethys. Is that right? Tethys. Tethys. Yes. Um, now I got terrible grades in science growing up, so you're gonna have to dumb this down for me. Uh, what exactly is the Tethys? How does it work? Can you explain it to us? Yeah. So um, I've got my device. It's called Tethys, as she said earlier. Um, it is the Greek goddess of fresh water. So that's what Tethys means. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So um, I'll just kind of walk you through the process. Yeah. So first, what you do is you dip um, the cartridge, which can easily be attached to the device itself, in um, the water you wish to test. Um, after you do that, all you have to do is set it down and um, connect over Bluetooth. Okay. Um, so. Hey, let's wait for the, let, make sure we get the close up of that. I want to make sure they see it at home. There oh, we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's so neat. So um, once you connect over Bluetooth, and it needs to give a connected status, otherwise um, it won't work. So when there's a green um, button or mm -hmm. like a green label that oh, says yeah. connected, you can all you have to do is click check status. Oh. And so it looks like the water in this um, little container is safe, so it's safe to drink. Wow. So and yeah. we got this from our tap water, our tap. Probably yeah. in the kitchen. And so Let's you were testing. Yeah, the, we're good. We're good to go. Yeah. So, and you're testing for lead, is that right? Um, this, yes, I'm testing for lead in the water. Um, today's current solutions are, um, some of them are time consuming and requires expensive equipment. So, yeah. um, that's why I developed a device which can give you accurate results and, um, in the instantaneous time. That is yeah. amazing. So, is this something that, like, all of us should be doing with our water? Should all of us be testing for stuff like that? Or is it specific areas? Yeah, so um, an average person tests for lead specifically in their water once in three months. Mm. Um, through research, I found out that we should be testing our water um, two times in a month. Wow. So um, water quality is just as important as like doctor appointments and other things like that. Oh, so. interesting. And yes. I'm assuming because this is so easy to use and so simple, and I'm assuming cheap parts too, Yeah. this could revolutionize water quality around the world. Yeah, it's approximately $20, and um, I'm looking to make it commercially available so that it's in everyone's hands. You are amazing. <laughs> that how, is wait, so <laughs> I got it. How old are you? I am 11 years old. And that thing... The thing you got there with the <laughs> phone and the blue thing, you made that or you invented the idea of it? Um, yeah, along with uh, my mentor, okay. um, Dr. Schaefer, I did develop a device um, to detect lead in water and um, I wired this all and created a 3D printed we, outer cover as well. Wow. So you wired it and you created the 3D. <laughs> yeah. And develop the mobile app. Is oh, it getting or? annoying <laughs> the amount of adults that are saying, you know, you've just got to amazing future <laughs> is that has that hit you yet i'm sorry usually i don't talk this much but i'm just you're 11 years old well i was playing video games at 11. yeah i was gonna ask you what were you what were you I doing was, at 11? i was yeah. having i was trying to find the cheat codes for the mm. sims yeah mm -hmm. same here but so this yeah, is this is really incredible what made you decide to focus on water why water um i had been following the flint water crisis for about two years now yeah so since i was nine and um it, I didn't really think about creating a device until I saw my parents testing for lead in our water mm. um, using the test strips or sending our water off to the EPA. Okay. And um, I realized that it wasn't a reliable process and I wanted to do something to change this, not only for my parents, but also for the residents of Flint and the other places like Flint around the world. So yeah. that's how I developed my tool. That's amazing. <laughs> that is incredible. So you were talking about Dr. Kathleen Schaefer, your mm -hmm. mentor. Yes. So how did she work with you to, to create Tethys? Um, Dr. Schaefer had originally introduced me into nanotube simulation. Mm -hmm. um, what that so this black strip right here is um, carbon nanotubes. Okay. And carbon nanotubes are um, 
super fast conductors of electricity, and um, they're two light tube-like structures made out of carbon itself. So, um, I it was a difficult process in order to um, see how chloride. Um, does things to carbon nanotubes, so I had to use simulation softwares on um, laptops in order to do this, and um, that's how my mentor introduced me to those. And um, while I was doing my experimentations as well, she helped me slow down and take like safety and disposal requirements into action, and to make sure that I had everything ready. Wow, wow, yeah. and okay, let's can we hold it up again? I yeah. think we missed this. It's a carbon nanotube. Is that what you said? Yes, carbon nanotube. Oh man, yeah. you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Just thank you. Man, so I read, speaking of being really smart, so in 15 years, so when you're 26, you hope to be a geneticist or a, I had to write down the pronunciation, an epidemiologist. Did I say that right? Epidemiologist. Ah, oh, yeah. shoot. Wow. I was so <laughs> close. So when I was your age, I wanted to be a cat. Um, <laughs> so what exactly is a geneticist and an epidemiologist? Epidemiologist. Shoot, I did it again. All right, so what are those? <laughs> um, a geneticist is somebody who studies um, genes in particular um, to look at the trend of genes along different generations. Okay. And um, I think that I would like to be an, a geneticist specifically because um, I'm interested in gene editing and um, it looks like the next thing that's going to come up. Um, to possibly be used to detect diseases faster. Oh, okay. And um, epidemiology is the study of skin. Oh. And it's interesting to me, again, to find out the different diseases or like um, just simple cuts and wounds that can happen to one of our largest organs in our body. Yeah, yeah. so you're gonna, you're gonna change the world. You're, <laughs> you have a path. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's awesome. So um, yeah, you obviously have a very bright future ahead of you and who knows what other amazing innovations you're gonna pioneer. Why do you think it's so important for kids and specifically girls, to be interested in, in science? Um, I always tell everybody that it's kind of like boy colors and girl colors. Yeah. Like, um, when I was little, I used to like blue. I still like blue. It's not technically a boy color, and pink is not a girl color. Yeah. Um, so in that case, science is not a boy subject, and language arts is also not a girl subject. Right. So um, it doesn't matter whether you're a girl or a boy and what age you are. Um, it's just good to know that... Um, if you enjoy science, then you should keep pursuing your dreams, um, coming up with inventions, and try to save the world. That <laughs> I'm just blown away. I'm just blown away because the things you're saying. I mean, these are things that you know. I I don't want to use the term because you're, you're. I don't want to insult your intelligence, but like you know, grown-ups have a hard time grasping yeah. that like boys should be interested. Girls and boys, there's no real difference, and yeah. we need to change the world. So how is it that you understand that? And so many grown-ups. A struggle. That's such a big question for you, <laughs> uh, but it, it's true. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, um, I think I've always just, um, I've always enjoyed science, and um, there are other kids in my class who don't enjoy science as much as me, of course. Yeah. Um, and most of those kids are boys, and they enjoy like other subjects like um, social studies or language arts. Yeah. So. Whatever comes to your heart first or whatever you enjoy most in school or are most passionate about, um, you should continue, keep going with that and um, see where it takes you in the future. Yeah, and speaking of that, what, what's your next big project? So you tackled this, check, done, mm -hmm. you know, we've got lead fixed. <laughs> what, what's the next problem you'd like to tackle in the world? Um, I haven't really thought about creating any other devices just yet. Um, I'm trying, right now I'm trying to focus on making this one commercially available. Yeah. And after that, I'm thinking of using um, gene editing in order to um, create my new device. I think it'll, it's a very interesting topic. Um, yeah. Yeah, so like for possibly like re repelling diseases even. Yeah. Um, like editing those genes can really make a difference. That is so awesome. Yeah. Well, we, I, I'm so inspired by you. Really, truly, congratulations. Thank and you. And we can't wait to see what else you do. It's, it's going to be awesome. You're going to be you. great. Uh, so to learn more about Kitanjali and her amazing creation, you can check out youngscientistlab.com slash challenge. And uh, thank you again so much for coming. This is thank awesome. You. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so in just a second, we're going to check in with Mike and a very special guest on wheels. But first, we had to take a quick break. Right. So now, our own Mike Janella and special guest Cecile Klaus are going to teach us the ins and outs of roller dancing. Mike? Cassie, uh, yeah, fun fact, uh, CC Klaus is here. Okay. She's a professional. I have never skated once in my life. This is my first time ever on roller skates, so I think this was Paul's idea maybe because he probably wants to see me fall on my butt. But you're going to teach me some things in a little bit, right? CC, you're going to yeah. take care of me, make me yeah. a pro. Yeah, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so CC grew up in Paris and France, has now been living here in the U.S. for the last 
how long? Eight years? Eight years, yeah. Uh, and you have more titles than I have fingers, so I'm going to try and get them all. You're a skater, a dancer, <laughs> a skate dancer, a choreographer, an artistic director, and the founder of the Missile Skate Dance Company. Yeah, that's it. That's crazy. So, uh, <laughs> skate dancing, What you're going to show us in a little bit, but explain what it is. Yeah, um, well, it's a combination of dance and skating. So, I'm a dancer and uh, a skater too, so I wanted to combine both. And um, I've been very interested like in... Um, uh, like converting all dance styles on skates. So, I like that. Yeah. Very cool. So what do you love most about it? What makes you inspired to do this for a living, basically? Well, I started to be a musician, actually. I play piano and um, I wanted to, more than play the music, I wanted to live it and I felt like dancing was a way to live the music. I like that. That's so beautiful, <laughs> right? Take the music and just live it and dance it and put it on wheels. Um, so what's what's your life like? Because you travel all over the place. Do you wake up? Do you sleep in your skates? Do you eat dinner on your skates? Do you, I mean, what, what yeah, do you do? How, that's, does, how that's, does this work? That's what you do in the beginning when you okay. first get skates and you get addicted. You start like doing everything on skates. Uh, not anymore, but um, I still like I have my team in Paris and I have my team in New York and um, they do uh, shows for events, music videos. Um, all kinds of stuff, private parties and everything. So, and yeah, and I teach workshops, I teach classes. I mean, I trained the, the company in Paris and now I'm training the one in New York. So, and we're trying to be international and spread out more. <laughs> I love it, that's amazing. So if someone like me who's a beginner, you're gonna show me in a little bit some, some lessons, but if people want to be like you, they see your company perform or they see you on Instagram and the pictures look so amazing and fun okay. and they want to get into skate dancing or roller skating, what's some of your advice for them to get started? Well, get skates, maybe? Skates are important, <laughs> yeah, you want to skate dance, you're going to need skates, okay. Uh, well, if you're a dancer and you have already coordination, it's a big plus, and if you ever like skated before, any anything, ice skating, roller skating, skateboarding, or surfing, it's already like some balance skills. But we can start with like any level, and I have very, very basic steps that we can start with. Okay, um, lucky for me, I have never done any of those things she mentioned. I've never surfed, I've never skated, none of that stuff. So you are working with the very beginner of beginners here. But I'm ready for some lessons. Can yeah. you teach me a couple yeah. things? All right, the interview's no done. <laughs> now it's time for some action. So teach me how to be like you, Cece. Okay, so first we're going to bend your, your knees All right. and uh, have your hands on your knees. This yeah. is easy so far, this natural. Is, yeah. yeah, this is the best position. Okay. And now uh, we're going to test your balance. Uh-oh, I'm scared. <laughs> All right, how do we do that? So, you're going to lift and try to clap under your leg. <laughs> okay. Hey, there Boom, you go. There we go. All right. <laughs> Other one. Other one. And then as fast as you can. Okay, right. very good. I like this. Okay, right. very good. Okay. Balance is yeah. good. Okay. So, stay low now. All we're right. going to do scissors. Oh, now we're actually using the wheels and we're moving. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, they have, little, they have these little things here on the end to stop people from me, like falling on our face. All right, so, so these are scissors. scissors. Good. All right, nice. Make small little ones fast. There we go. Okay, good. Now they right. make big ones. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> if I tear my pants, Cece, you're going to have to buy me a new pair. <laughs> All right, slowly okay, but surely. Not right? bad. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Let's try something else. Um, yeah, now what? Toe heel. I'm starting to sweat. It's hot in here. <laughs> it's, toe a, heel. it's a workout. Okay, okay. toe heel. Toe Heel. Good, okay. Other right. leg, toe heel. Toe heel. Okay, just like toe heel. Yeah. Uh. Toe heel. Good, okay. Cassie, what do you think? I'm looking good out here, huh? All right. Now yeah. what? I feel like toe heel I got mastered. Okay, yeah. good. How about um, show off and show your skates? Oh, okay. Show off. Show off. Like oh, show I how good your skates are. Uh. I bought these skates just for you. <laughs> I heard you were coming. World renowned <laughs> skate dancer. I said I got to buy myself some new fresh skates. All right, that's pretty okay, good. Okay, very good. How that's about a turn? <sighs> Wish me luck, okay. You can take your time. Turn, turn, <laughs> turn. All right. Okay, very good. good. Can you do it faster? Well, I'll try. Not as fast as you, but I'm working on it. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's good. All right, that's good. good. We're good. off to a good start. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm going to get out of the way in a little bit, and Cece's going to show us a whole routine. You've got a little, some moves for us that you're going to show us, right? But first, we had America's Top Young Scientist here earlier, and I think Paul got inspired. Let's check out the little thing Science Lab. Paul, take it away. Thanks, Mike. We are in the science lab, and I was inspired by the 11-year-old genius, and I'm going to show her. I'm not as smart as her, but I'm going to do something incredible. All right, this is called elephant toothpaste, and I haven't followed the directions yet. So you need hydrogen peroxide can irritate skin, so put on safety goggles. All right, I got my safety goggles. Hydrogen peroxide, you do half a cup of this. All right. Okay, 
half a cup. You put it into the bottle. Usually people have funnels, but I like to wing it. Oh. Okay, step one, hydrogen peroxide. Do not drink the hydrogen peroxide. Step two, add eight drops of your favorite food coloring into the bottle. I like red. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oop. There's a bit more, that's orange. All right, half a cup, okay, yeah. One tablespoon, one packet of dry yeast. And I'm gonna put that, wait. Okay, wait, I'm not following directions. Add about one tablespoon of liquid soap into the bottle and swish it around. Tablespoon. Into the bottle? Okay. Okay. Swish it around. I'm excited. <clears throat> Add about one, okay. In a separate small cup, combine warm water and yeast together. Now our baby scientists taught about the importance of safety. The problem was I did not have any safety goggles. So usually you want to have safety goggles in any given situation. So that's some yeast in a separate small cup combined. Okay, I'm doing it. 30 seconds of this. All right, so this is supposed to be it. Has it been 30 seconds? Feels like 30 seconds. All right, this is supposed to do something. I don't know how it would. Ready? Five, four, three, two. Ah! 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 <laughs> I'm a science! That's way better than an app that saves lives. <laughs> it's not. It's not, she's a genius and has such an amazing future. Wow, this is so cool. Are we getting close-ups? Look at that, I don't know what the science is there, but clearly something's happening. All right, that was incredible. Everyone, you wanna educate yourselves and learn the sciences. We're gonna take it back to Mike and some amazing roller dancing. Let's take a look. Man. Well, how how do we top Paul the scientist? Paul, you're, you're saving lives with your elephant toothpaste. That was fantastic. Uh, well, Cece, you have now, you're ready to show us all your magic and professional tricks. Now, Cece told me the floor is a little bit uh, stickier than you're used to, right? That's so that I don't fall down, but you, sorry to slow you down. All right, so I am going to get out of here and leave this to the pro. Enjoy this show from Cece Klaus. Can I get a little push out? Cause I'm not sure I can, yeah, woo. All right, see you guys. <laughs> Great job, that was amazing. Cece Klaus, putting me to shame. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you That was me. fantastic. We'll be back with even more fun stuff on Refresh, but first, a quick break, don't go anywhere.
<laughs> that was what an episode. That was a really fun episode. I'm a little, you know, I'm a little. You guys got to roller skate. I you get to a do science. a science. I sat here the whole time. It was okay. You did great at that. Thank you. But yeah, guys, if you're into more amazing stories, videos, adventures, science like that, you can check us out on our website. Binge watch us. Eat some popcorn. Eat some pizza. www.littlethings.com slash 